So right here, this is one of the ducks that we hatched out. Remember we hatched out six of them. And um, look how big he's getting. You're getting pretty big, aren't you, buddy? You are. And right here is one of the turkeys that we raised. You're gonna flap. You're a big boy, aren't you? Look at this guy. Yeah, so these should have gone out to pasture probably a couple weeks ago. So that's what we're gonna be working on this morning. Hey chickens, this is my tractor. Come on, get out, get out, come on. Fence charger. So last year we set up our poultry pasture over here and this is sloped sideways the whole way and that made it a little bit of a challenge. So this year we're going to set it up right behind the house. This is more flat ground and then we're going to set up the poultry pasture from about where the tractor is back toward me. So we haven't had any significant rain for at least two weeks. The ground, this clay has hardened up and I ended up I set out some sprinklers, a couple sprinklers out here last night, hoping to soften up the ground so that this fence will step in a lot easier. Oh, well, there's two electric nettings piled in here. Obviously, Watering the ground for a few hours was not enough. It's only like in two inches. Looks like it needs a little bit of attention after sitting for a year. Might have to make a few repairs. So this here is part of our mobile turkey roost. 
It's not too mobile anymore. We stole the wagon from underneath it to move those house trailer frames. So I'm not sure how stable this will be. I may add a couple uh, timbers at the bottom of this to make it have a wider stance. That way the wind don't blow it over. But at least it'll give them some place to roost, some place for shade. So I also brought out the chicken tractor and we'll leave the door propped open so that they can get in there for shade as well. We are raising two batches of meat chickens later this year, so it needs to be out here. Might as well get everything out here before we completely enclose this with the netting. So I'm not sure if it shows up on camera real well, but you can see the electric netting comes around here, goes back there and then comes around back in there. And that is gonna be our poultry area this year. And we'll be able to watch them from right up here on our deck. And we can just go out the walkout basement door and we can water them, feed them, do the chores. It'll be real easy when it's this close to the house. So here where our two sections of electric netting come together, I'm gonna go ahead and put our ground rod here. And then our fence charger will actually mount on it, I think. She's driving pretty hard. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in the hole. Oh yeah, feels like it's gonna work. All right, we got the fence charger and ground rod set up and ready to go. But before I go any farther, I need to go up and run the dairy heifers through the squeeze chute because I gotta give them their shots for the AI process. PJ is coming in like two days and he's gonna finalize that. Hopefully they're pregnant afterwards. But today I've gotta to give them shots at precisely like noon today. So I need to run over there. Just so happens that my and Ellie just happened to be hanging out in here. And Mo, can't see him hiding back there, but the Ram's back there. And it is so hot and stuffy today. I don't know why they would wanna be inside in here. Can't get to it yet, Maya. Hold on. There you go. Get in there. All right. Looks like we got Maya, Heli, and Mo. We'll let them go ahead and finish that feed, and then we'll run them through the chute. But it is definitely feeling like summertime out here. I just looked at the weather. It's 86 degrees today with 57% humidity. It says it feels like 99 degrees in the sun and it feels like 91 in the shade. And that's where all the animals are, is in the shade. The cows were in here and the sheep were over here in this fence line. That's where they are right now, in the shade. But it still feels like 91 to them. It's a hot day. The humidity just makes it miserable out here. So this little catch pin we made has actually worked out really well. We ran them through a few times now. It just needs to have something in this corner back here. I don't know, we're gonna put a 45 degree in that corner or some kind of round panel so it's more like an actual tub so you can squeeze them down and uh, make them go through the chute but this has worked out really well for us it's it's easy to get them in there since they're so friendly um, with a little bit of feed and ellie she's always the one who wants to get out she's the first one through the chute every time Let's see if it's the same way today i think it's close enough to noon it's about 10 till 15 till all right, who's first today? There you go, good boy. All right, Maya, head that way, head that way. There you go, good girl. You knock it off. It's got rammed by Mo. There you go, good girl. There you go. Go on through, sweetheart. Get your head in there. Come on. Come on, Maya. Get your head in there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Wrong one. 
All right, Maya, you're locked in. All right, got her neck squeezed down. So for Maya, we got to pull out her cedar that PJ inserted. See if we can get it out. There we go. And now that we got her in this neck holder, I can give her a shot right here. There you go, Maya. You were a good patient. Put this needle away. Go ahead and squeeze you. Maybe let's see if we can release you. Pull forward, mate. Pull, pull forward. Come on. There you go. Good girl. We'll make sure this is all shut up so no animals can accidentally get in it. So we went ahead and gave Ellie her hormone shots. Her cedar came out just like a couple days after it was put in. And that is an abbreviation. It's like C-I-D-R. I can't tell you what it stands for. But my understanding, it's got some kind of hormones that absorb into the heifer. So even though the cedar came out, we still gave her all the hormone shots. We're still going to uh, AI her just like we would to try to get her pregnant and see what happens. So Rebecca, she ended up having a dentist appointment right at noon when I was supposed to give the shots today. So I had to do that by myself. And while I was doing it, the camera ended up overheating and shut off on me. And I did get a uh, threw a different battery in there that was cold and was able to finish up Maya and get a little bit of footage of that and uh, After that I decided this is just it was a good time to just go ahead and break for lunch cool down the Cameras cooled down. I'm cooled down. Rebecca just got back from the dentist and now we can finally go back to work There you go First time on grass. Rebecca pointed out these are louder and the girls are louder, so they may be girl ducks. All right, I'm going to show you the wild duck that we found that the cat drug up here. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Okay. So, see his wings? He's got nice blue feathers that have come in. And I figure as soon as he can fly over the net, he's ready to be released. So, I think he'll just eventually leave on his own. They're already bigger than him. Yeah, our, our Peking crosses are definitely bigger than the wild duck is, that's for sure. Whoa! I have to close the door. No, don't do that. No, no. You're much lighter. They're trying to get through. They got through. Uh-oh. I was a little worried about them because they are so small. The wild duck's trying to get out too. Uh, no. Uh. Well, they're finding their way through a hole in the net. Yeah. The, one, the wild duck may have escaped already. Let me get out before you energize that. Okay. Is it on? It's blinking. What? Blinking? Okay. I think the wild duck made it out. I don't see it no more. Oh, they got out still! Uh, 
They still got out. The ducks are still getting out of the netting, even with it electrified. They're still trying to find their way out. Come on. Good thing you guys are slow. Sorry. Oh, you got them all. Yeah. How did you do that? Now I'm gonna have to step over right. where there's no water, I guess. Well, they can get through the net, or they're finding their way through all the right. net. They can fit through the little squares. So they need water and food in there. Yeah, so we're gonna leave them in the chicken tractor until they get a little bigger. So the wild duck was able to make it out of the netting also, and he went straight for the pond. He knew exactly what it was. He was out there swimming with our ducks. So he's completely free. He um, looked to be pretty much feathered out, so he was probably ready to go anyway. So I guess he's, he set himself free. So no more wild duck. Hey, little guys. Here's some water. I'm sure you don't make a mess of it. Well, at least the ducks are moved out here, even though they have to stay in the chicken tractor until <laughs> they get bigger. Uh, the turkeys seem fine. They just kind of got used, got to get used to the outside and where their food and water is. And at least they're not inside the barn anymore. We got a batch of meat chickens coming next week. So we need the brooder for baby chicks. So they needed to leave. So four days ago, I fenced in part of this front 12 acres with some temporary electric. And I gave it to the dairy heifers and the sheep. And they have grazed it down to almost nothing. It used to look like this. And this is some warm season grass. It came in naturally. I didn't plant it. It only really sees, you can kind of see where it ends. It's only on the south side of this field. And it just kind of, I'm just trying to take advantage of it since it grew on its own. And this fencing goes from that white pole barn, kind of comes down this way and then back. And that was an eighth mile of, of poly braid on a spool and uh, on two spools. And that's as far as I could get. So I ordered some more poly braid. I've got a couple quarter mile spools now, and we're gonna extend this, and we're gonna try to bring this down as far as possible, see how far we can get this direction and give them more to graze, because we might as well have them graze this and let our normal pastures have a few more days of rest. So the ground is solid as a rock. Evan said we're really gonna have to pound these in. So I thought, why not drill a hole first and then put them in? So hopefully that'll make it easier. Yeah, and I grabbed a different type of drill bit too. That's a, actually like a concrete bit. So it won't like ruin a drill bit, hopefully. Hopefully it'll get Like the regular this. drill bit, you'd ruin it in the ground. So hopefully that one works. We'll see. Well, that went right in. Yeah. It went as far as the drill bit. So we'll go ahead and turn our electric fence charger off. We're gonna run our first wire. We're gonna run it just on top of this one on the existing posts until we get down to that green grass and then we'll shoot off onto our new posts and into our new area. Once we get the new area established, we'll come back, we'll take these other wires down. You can see this electric fence comes all the way over here to the backside of this white pole barn. So it's a, it's a pretty good length of wire that we got set up. It's gonna get even bigger. Hello, Maya. Good thing about setting this up is the animals will, they'll respect it. They'll think it's hot when it's not. So it'll give us time to get everything exactly the way we want it before we turn it back on. So we were able to get this temporary wire all the way down past the workshop and then back down. So we've added quite a bit more, but to reinforce the corners, we're gonna put in a fiberglass fence post and that'll kind of help take the stress off of these little step-in posts.
So I guess we didn't make it too far past the workshop because the workshop's the back of it's right there. We're only probably 20 feet past the workshop, but we're about a little over halfway down the field, just barely halfway. Ooh, that's way harder. So about 20 minutes ago, we finished setting up this new electric fence and it is hot and miserable out here in the sun. The animals have already came out, they've grazed, they've made it all the way to one end and then they went back to the shade. And I bet me and Rebecca took three breaks trying to set this fence up. And um, we didn't film everything we did. It is like hot and miserable. It is really hard to set up a camera and just stop and record what you're doing. So, but the first thing we did is we took the first spool and we tried to determine what the size was gonna be. And then we took a lawnmower and we, we mowed a path through this grass. And then we had to drill in every one of them posts and get it set up. And then we came back with our second spool of wire, got it all set up and we ended up being probably 40 feet, I'd say short from reaching the fence. So that spool of wire, I bet it was a hundred feet shorter than the other spool. And the, so then we had to shorten everything up. So then we had to readjust our posts, shorten it all up and, um, which made it take twice as long. So we were out here for a while trying to get this temporary fence set up. We're glad it's done. The animals got some forage to graze on at least for the next probably four days or so. And then we're gonna have to figure out where to move them after that. So here's our three feeder steers and they are on temporary pasture too. So the feeder steers have this area east of the barnyard fence here and then they have the area to the south of the fence as well. And then they have the whole pig pasture area off to the side, which is this whole wooded area back that direction. So they've got a pretty decent sized area to graze, but all the livestock are inside a temporary electric fence right now. And we're trying to get our regular pastures uh, time to rest and regrow, but we need some rain. We haven't had rain in a couple weeks, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens over the next week or so, um, we got about start got to get creative in where we put our animals. So the good thing about electric fence is you can be creative with it. So we can put them in places we haven't before. I may, I have considered maybe even moving them to the back into the first hay field and just let them have that hay field to graze through this dry weather. I mean, we just gotta, we just gotta do what we gotta do. So let's we'll play it by ear and wait, see what happens. So tomorrow I plan on working on the fencing project again. I've got about 90 T posts in the ground, so I'm a little over halfway on those. I've got a few things that I need to wrap up and I'll have some sections ready to pull. If I can get all those little things done, I'll have, I think five fence pulls ready that we can go ahead and like stretch the wire and put it up. And believe me, when you're, you're putting up, even if I have a few sides up of, of you know, the field fencing, that will help me so much when setting up this temporary wire because that's one side I don't have to run with electric fence. So I will be happy when we get some of this permanent fencing in. It sure will make some of these moves a little bit easier. But anyway, I think that's it for this video, guys. So thanks for watching. Well, I'll see you in the next one. Well, here's the pigs. I forgot to show you guys the pigs. They are covered in mud. They've got a nice big mud hole over here and they are keeping themselves cool aren't you yeah there you guys go there you go every year we always get one pig that wants to lay in the feed it's like he claims it for himself so i gotta have two feeders there's two feed troughs you don't have to fight over the one come on <laughs>